Hello and welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. I thought I'd bring you into the shop and just take a look at a few of these panels here and some of the pieces I've sprayed recently. See how they're drying up and tightening up. So here's my doors. I shot these. These were done about a week ago. You can see everything's really starting to pull tight now. Not much orange peel going on in there. And uh, no issues really that I can see that are going to be any kind of a problem when we cut and polish this. And probably won't be doing that on any of these panels until the end of the summer. Take these through one of our Las Vegas summers and really dry them out. But uh, looking good so far. we got to spray the back side of those doors yet. Uh, engine cover, this we completed yesterday, so it's still a little bit soft. Another couple of days, she'll tighten up even more. But looking good so far. These, uh, these parts here, I think I shot these at least two weeks ago. And I think if we get in close... Get in there, you might be able to see there's a little bit of orange peel starting to go on these. You can see a little bit in there, but uh, not too bad. We got real good, uh, real good solid content in there, and uh, really going to be helpful when we do our polish out. Fenders are drying up nice. Let's see, just a little bit of, uh, might be a little something in there, but, but not bad. Actually, really looking good, really happy with it. Our rear bumpers those look pretty nice. And then uh, I shot this today. This is our gas tank. It's a color, it's a color from PPG that I had uh, made up for us. So this should match pretty close to our original color on that tank. Might be kind of a cool contrast with our slate gray. And then, as you saw in our previous video, here's our steering wheel assembly. What I've done with this is I've sanded this down. Um, 600 grit, all these pieces were paint stripped, six, uh, 600 grit sanded. Then I epoxy sealed them, uh, re-wet sanded those again at 600, and then sealed them again, and then scuffed them. So these have two coats of epoxy on there. Then I'm going to take this steering wheel. Um, it has some cracking in there and some issues that I had to work out, sand out. So with two coats of epoxy on there and all the uh, sanding should pretty much hold that thing nice and stable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put three coats, three complete coats over the entire steering wheel of our uh, 2K satin black paint and encapsulate the whole thing. Then I will mask it off right here at the spokes so our spokes remain satin and make that transition on the wheel. This is actually going to be a dark gray uh, wheel rim on here. The real color was not black. It actually was a gray color. So I'm going to mix that one up myself. I'm going to take what paint I have left over from our gas tank and do a custom mix on that. Um, I think I can get it pretty close to what it was. I have pictures of uh, the gray that was on there. I think we can get pretty close. Like a very dark charcoal. Definitely not black. Um, and definitely not a light gray. So it'll be interesting to see how it looks when we get that finished. And then uh, got our gas tank filler. This thing drying up really nice. Nice and shiny. Everything seems to be flowing out really good. And then our steering, our steering support. And then our hood. So all I have left to do on this hood, we gotta shoot the backside. You'll see this one in the process of going through it. I shot this one in, it was about 80 degrees. When I did the spray out on this, and uh, you'll be able to see the difference in that to where we are now. You can see the reflection is really tight now. The wiggle in those lights is very small. But uh, when we go back and take a look at the actual spray on this, you can see uh, quite a bit of buildup on that. And it's really struggling to flow out, but it did flow out, and I think we're going to be fine. And then over here we have our uh, smuggler's box lid. Shot that this morning. And I sprayed up our heater control knob and tuned up our gear shifter knob and all our little parts here and fingerprints on them now and then our screws to put our door hinges back together. That's where we are so far. Just need to spray the back of the doors, spray the back of the hood and finish up the other side of the gas tank. We should be in pretty good shape. Uh, hinges. Still hanging. Probably had to get these out of here. They're getting a little bit dusty. 
Okay, well let's head back out to that spray booth and get some stuff going. All right, so uh, first thing we want to do is we want to properly stage our panel or panels depending on what we're doing with them. In the case of this panel here, I built this stand at a very specific height and width to the hood so that when I get around this thing, I can move around it quickly, not have any kind of hindrance. And also the height of it is set up more for the extraction of the overspray rather than as my comfort level of actually spraying the hood out. This is actually very low. So when I spray this hood, I'm gonna be bent way over and I'm gonna have my head right down in it. I wanna actually see what's happening with the spray as it's coming out of the gun, hitting the panel and connecting. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for how well all the droplets are bleeding together. And with that, I can adjust my speed and distance as I'm moving across the panel. And I will hardly pull my, my head back very unrobotic. You have to stay engaged all the time you're pulling the trigger. Also, uh, masking. So underneath this guy, we're going to wrap under and make our transition in that seam there. And then we're going to paint the hood uh, backside last. So it's been block sanded. I've looked it over real close. No need for any spot priming here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flash wipe it with a reducer and a microfiber rag. Microfiber rags uh, I buy usually in a box or a bundle and then I throw them in the wash machine with no soap, uh, just wash them up and pull them out on the spin cycle, let them air dry. And what that's doing is removing all the loose bits and lint out of there and not contaminating it with any soap. If you put them in the dryer, you could have some residual softener uh, get on your fabric and, and be a problem in your painting. So nice and clean, water only, pull them out and air dry them and they're gonna work best for you. Also, microfiber works really good because it's actually got some teeth to it. You get down there and really scrub out uh, the pores and the, and the scratch marks. So 600 grit's pretty fine, but that microfiber uh, really does a nice job. So let's flash wipe this, and then we're going to get on with some base color. Okay, after we wiped it down with our microfiber rag and our reducer, and what we want to do is we want to blow the pan off, make sure there's no lint on there. We're going to do it with filtered air, coming out of our filters, and then we're going to tack rag it, and then we're ready for base. Put base down, looks like it's drying up all right. Give us about another 10 minutes before I start shooting with clear on here. Let's go look at something that we don't want in the paint booth. This is what I call drama in the paint booth. Try and straighten out your cord, get you back into your paint bucket. That's the kind of stuff that can happen. We hope to keep that to a minimum.
Okay guys, there we are, last coat on our long hood, early model Porsche hood. So conditions in Vegas now are changing quite rapidly actually. This is gonna be the last panel uh, for exterior paint I'll be doing. Um, conditions in the booth now, we're right at 80 degrees and I really prefer to work in a little bit cooler temperatures, although can't always get it, so you gotta roll with the punches. So I'll show you the difference between spraying a uh, clear coat in an 80 degree environment versus a 70 degree environment. Oh, keep an eye on this light here as I move the camera across. You see the see the size of the wiggle? Wiggle in that light is just a little bit bigger. Not quite as pure a reflection. What that means is flashing a little bit quicker. It's not quite having as much time to level out and flow out as it would like. Although we've got plenty of material on this hood uh, to block it out and it won't be a problem. But that's what you can run into. You start spraying at warmer temperatures, a little bit less forgiving. Flash times are less forgiving. But overall, very happy with this. Hopefully, we'll be uh, winding this down real soon, and I won't have to worry about temperature anymore. Okay, moving on to the back side of the hood. So what I've done is I sprayed the texture down, let that dry up a full 24 hours, then put uh, two sealer coats of a little bit more reduced. Uh, than our 10% epoxy to seal up the pores and give us a real nice base for our color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot color over this whole panel, three coats, then I'm going to mask the center area and shoot our clear coat uh, four to one to one over the entire perimeter. Once that dries, I'm going to pull the masking out of the center and then I'm going to mask the outside edge and I'm going to use a reduced coat of clear on the center. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want too much build on there. We're going to lose our texture. Um, so we need, to, we need to thin it down uh, to flow out over the pores and the texture so we don't have any bubbling issues. And uh, that should give us a real nice definition and everything works together. The only way I can really think to get through that properly is to do it in two sprays. So also we got some funny looking masking here which I'm going to go over uh, in a lot more detail when we do the engine cover. So let's flash wipe this, tack rag it, and get some color going. Okay, got our three coats of base down. Looks like it's drying up real nice. Uh, texture looks to be working out okay. Don't see any issues in there I need to be worrying about. Uh, it's getting ready to pull our blast shield off of here. So, see how I've got it masked off here. So what, what I'm doing is I'm just covering our lip so we don't get any base color on that. I just want to have clear on top of clear. I'm gonna pull this back and then shoot clear right over that edge. And uh, I'm going to go over this in a lot deeper detail when we do the engine cover so it makes more sense. But for now, we're just going to uh, peel that off of there, get some paper, slide under our center area to protect that while we're shooting our perimeter.
Okay, it's been a full 15 minutes since our last coat. So I'm gonna slide this paper out of here very gently. I'm gonna pull everything inwards so that it doesn't back up and create a problem on that edge. Very gently. that's set up for about six hours and then I'm going to mask off the outside and tape underneath that lip rather than taping on top of it. Okay, so she's set up about 30 minutes now. I want to get it while it's still fairly soft. So what I've done is I've peeled away all the outside paper um, so that we're loose. And then I'm just going to reach inside and I'm going to pull inwards and upwards, uh, being very careful that nothing backs in and touches the soft paint. So really what could happen is you've got wet paint touching wet paint. Not really wet, but it's tacky, so it could stick. Let's see how we do. She is. Okay, I just got her paper pulled out of there. Not too bad on pulling that inwards and upwards. Didn't seem to have any kind of uh, forces against us there. Our outside perimeter drying up real nice. It's been about seven hours now since I sprayed that. And this has been maybe half hour. So, yeah, quite a bit of work in one of these hoods painted up. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this, uh, a lot of different ways to approach it, how to paint the inside and outside. This is just one of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off of here now. So that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, next up, we're gonna take a close look at the engine cover and how to paint that out and mask it up. There's quite a bit going on with that. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video.